Welcome to Electron Online. There's nothing like seeing multiple examples of something before we kind of get the hang of it. So here's example number two of how to solve a differential equation using Laplace transforms. Again, it's a homogeneous equation. Later on, we'll show you how to solve the non-homogeneous equations. Here are also the initial conditions, y at 0 equals 0 and y prime at 0 equals 2. And of course, we still have the equations up there to help us figure out how to find the Laplace transform of a differential equation. y double prime can be found using this equation right here. So if we take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation, the left side will look as this. We get s squared times the Laplace transform of the original function minus s times y at 0 minus y prime at 0. So you can see here that if we take the Laplace transform of the second derivative, we get s squared times the Laplace transform of the function minus s times the function evaluated 0 minus the derivative of the function evaluated 0. And that's exactly what we have here. Now we take the Laplace transform of the second term, so that would give us plus 9 times the Laplace transform of y, and that equals the Laplace transform of 0, which is simply 0. So the next step is to combine all the terms that have the Laplace transform in them, and then move everything else over to the other side. Of course, before we do that, we need to evaluate what y at 0 is and what, what prime at 0 is. So we have s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus y at 0, that's equal to 0, so this term disappears. y prime at 0 is equal to 2, so we get minus 2 plus 9 times the Laplace transform at y equals 0. So now we can move the minus 2 to the other side, and on the left side we can factor out the Laplace transform of the function. So we have uh, the Laplace transform of the function times, we have an s squared, and plus 9 over here, and that equals, when we bring the minus 2 to the other side, we get a plus 2. Now we divide both sides by s squared plus 9, so now we can see that the Laplace transform of y is equal to 2 divided by s squared plus 9. Okay, now that kind of looks like the Laplace transform of the sine of a function. Remember that if f of t is equal to the sine of omega t, then the Laplace transform of that will be equal to omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. Now take a look over here, that's almost what we have. Because we can write this as 2 divided by s squared plus 3 squared. So if we assume that omega is equal to 3, notice we almost have what we need here. So let's multiply the numerator times 3, and of course then we also have to divide by 3 as well. So we can say that the Laplace transform of y can now be written as 2 thirds times 3 divided by s squared plus 3 squared. Notice that if I cancel out the 3's, I end up exactly what I started with, but now I realize that this here can be transformed back, if we take the inverse transform, back to the sine of omega t, where omega in this case is equal to 3, so therefore this cannot be written, that the inverse transform of this, so therefore y, which is equal to the inverse transform of the quantity here, which is 2 thirds times 3 over s squared plus 3 squared, and of course remember that the constant can be taken out, so this can be 2 thirds times the Laplace transform of what we have over here, which is equal to 2 thirds times the sine of omega t, and omega in this case would be 3. And so this is the actual function. If we plug that back into the differential equation, you can see that if you take the second derivative of this, plug it over there, plus 9 times the function itself, that will equal 0. So therefore, this is a solution to our original differential equation.